Last week, you saw us descending Mint Bush Trail, scratching the surface of the challenges you can find off the beaten track in New South Wales. We had to reshape our plans, took in some vistas, and landed at Lake Conjola. Now, it's a brand new day. Your 4x4 is brought to you by Iveco, Trek Hardware, ARB, Cooper, Piranha and Narva. What's the old saying? Red sky at morning, shepherds take warning. Well, the sky flares over Lake Conjola a week into our trip as the fires in the south become more ferocious. Making the best of a troubling situation, three of our crew rise early to try their luck with a line. So Jeffrey, did you pick yourself up a fishing license or are you just trying to wing it? No, I definitely got the fishing license. That's one thing you make sure you do here in New South Wales. I just quickly jumped online this morning and picked up a two week fishing license for the time that we're th running through New South Wales. It was only like 14 or 15 bucks. So what are we actually fishing for in here? At Lake Conjola, we've got brim, flathead, a bit of sand whiting, and further out, apparently on the beach, there's um, school dew. All oh, right. But also I noticed a sign yesterday that said there was a grey nurse shark in here. I read that yesterday. <laughs> it's obviously got in when the entrance has been open, but they are a protected species, so if you do happen to catch it, definitely release it straight away. I caught the biggest fish. It was about that size. It was attached to the bottom of my fishing rod. As per normal, we caught nothing. You know, we're getting used to that, but it is relaxing. I'm not really a fish sort of guy of a morning, more a bacon. So unless you can reel one of those in. <laughs> you want me to catch a couple of rashes of bacon? Yeah. <laughs> As Danny leapt between his phone and computer, contacting rangers and fire authorities, the convoy continued to find ways to busy themselves. Very fortunate to grow up at the beach. Love the water, love the surf. Done a lot of kayaking, windsurfing. So I myself had a bit of a race. The major championships, the Grand National of Racing and Kayaking. We had Piranha versus Narva. Jeff had all on Jake, uh, and he's got guns three times the size of mine. We're going to go out to where that red post is out in the water, and the other. We've got an official sitting out there waiting so that there's no cheats. I'm a professional at everything I do, so my heart rate's sitting at a comfortable 46 beats per minute. I'm pretty calm. I oh, know it's 146, don't worry about it. One, two, three. Go! James hasn't done too much kiting, got a really bad start and just never recovered. I think he was so far behind at the start, he just halfway gave up and said, look, I've got no chance against Jake and my dad. <laughs> I've no idea what's going on. Looks like fun. He's not even puffing. It was a, an absolute nail-biting, split-decision finish. They bought one, because otherwise they'd just crack it. So he said, you bought one. Graceful as always. Danny called us all in for a chat about where to go from here. The news wasn't good. 
the fires have jumped the Princess Highway, the main arterial route of the area. It was important that we planned our movements not only for the convoy's safety, but also not to affect any emergency services or evacuation plans. The fires have really, really stuffed us up. So there's no heading west, there's no heading south from here. I've looked at some alternatives to fill in three days, but there'll be really small days. If we can do some driving, it'll be probably pretty easy tracks, nothing challenging at all. I'm waiting for phone calls back from parks. We'll end up near Kangaroo Valley. If anything else turns or if we get knocked back, we're going to really struggle. So doing our best. After the break, we'll return to Mintbush Trail, the hardest track we'd hit a few days prior. A couple of days before Lake Conjola, we were hitting the hardest tracks in the area. Mike, who'd dropped his trailer off ahead and gotten his car seen to, had finally caught up with us. I'm back, Jake. You wouldn't believe where I've been. Hang on a sec. Where have you been, Mick? Everywhere. It's, inc back, it's incredible. I was at Jarvis Bay, went for a swim, checked into the five star hotel, <laughs> sold my trailer. <laughs> what Mechanic shop to do? cleared the code. Yep. Wouldn't charge me. Spent like half an hour going through every code. It was like eight or nine codes. Yeah. A ripper of a bloke. I'm talking like, he wanted to give me a scan to it. Just take it with you. He goes, man, I got a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> With Mike back and local boys Aaron and Simo up front guiding, we finally headed off towards the legendary Monkey Gum Trail, the track we had all been waiting for. But to get there, we first had to follow the Mint Bush Trail, which turned out to be a whole lot more fun than we expected. So we started the track at Mintbush track, which was absolutely sensational. It was a downhill rock crawl all the way down. Good track is an understatement. Probably one of the best tracks I've done actually in Australia. Loved it. All sorts of people came along on the trip, of course, there were some new people like Grant who hasn't done much of this stuff before, but because of good spotting and good organisation, that car got to the top with no damage. That's incredible. Wheels in the air pretty much, I reckon, 70-80% of the time, getting over rocks. Helping other people on the tracks to try and get up the track, it was just sensational. Really, really mad wheel lifts. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. There's lots of campers down there at the moment. They're off wandering around having a look at people doing the tracks. Because there's a couple of pretty gnarly tracks in close to camp. It's a ripper track. There's just rock after rocks, little boulders and rutted tracks, and you just sort of cruise your way down and it's flexing your vehicles all the way down. It's awesome to watch.
from here we head off, we're going to what they call Monkey Gum. And apparently it's a very gnarly sort of track. See what we can do, try not to damage any vehicles, but we're gonna have some fun. All right, bring it on, next. What's next? That's a weapon. Let's go. <laughs> hey, let's do it. That's a weapon. Look at him. <laughs> Before the break, you saw an earlier part of our trip where we tackled the Mint Bush Trail. Fast forward to our current dilemma where our plan B is to head north away from danger. We've done our fair share of off-road kilometres over the past week and it's likely a few things on our trucks have rattled loose or become clogged with dust. So before we head off, it's a good time to do some basic mechanical checks. We've just had quite a few days of really, really great four-wheel driving and these cars are really important to us and it's important you look after them. And there's a couple of things that you really need to check out, and one of them is wheel nuts. I did check the wheel nuts before I left, but I'm gonna check them again now. I know it might sound really simple, there is nothing worse than a wheel falling off your car. This is a particularly long handle. This is because I have a particularly small and light wife. What we're gonna do is just gently feel if that's tight. Go for it. No, that's undoing. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I'm that's it, that, right that's the right side, yeah. Yep. And then go down. Okay, next one. Righto, so Grant, very, very important. If your negative terminal falls off, your battery's not going to charge properly. And one of the ways to check is to have a look here. You see how it clamps on. Grab it here, give that a wiggle, fairly hard wiggle. See how it moved? Yep. That's the beginning of the root of evil. That needs tightening up. Okay. Just going to grab that, Grant. Give that a wiggle. See how the battery's moving? Yeah. I'm pretty firm pretty on that. Secure, yeah. That's tight. Yep. Two more to go, my friend. No, no movement at all. Yep. Check that one for me. Excellent. So we have one slightly loose terminal. We'll go and fix that. Yep. Right, we've checked our battery terminals, we've checked our wheel nuts, two really important things. The next thing to check is the air filter. We've got clips, the clips just undo. Now, the next step is quite important. When we tip this off, we don't want to let rubbish fall in here. If you look inside there, that's nice and clean. Now see how that's black? Hang on to that. And here's one I prepared earlier, Grant. This is a brand new one, it's never been in the car. And as you can see, there's quite a significant difference. So what we've got is our filter out now. When we blow this out, the dust's gonna go down. And we don't want the dust getting into this. So we're gonna go downstream. We rotate it. Beautiful. Wow, there's a lot of dust in there. Like a bought one. We have now one basically clean filter going back in. Your clamp goes on here. That pulls the whole thing down to make a perfect seal. You don't force it, just finger tight it. You don't need any tools. The reason we have to do this air filter thing is very, very important. A clogged filter means two things. You're gonna use more fuel, which is a bad thing. The second thing is you're gonna lose power because you're reducing the air to fuel ratio and that can cause significant damage to the engine. Hell, thank you very much. Being Pleasure. Great, thank you, Brad. Thank you for your help. I'm very greasy. Me too. <laughs> Doesn't matter, all good. Finally getting back on the road, we pointed ourselves north to see what else we could find. We knew our four-wheel driving would be limited, but that didn't stop us from finding some sensational spots off the beaten track. Come along a couple of uh, bush tracks, but obviously we're not going to take the highway. We're going to find some other ways to get there, because that's what we do. As we drove down through all the farmland, we came through the hills, saw the aqua blue water and the bay here, absolutely beautiful with the white sand. Found our way to a magnificent little bay inlet, an awesome stretch of a secluded little beach. White sand, Queenslandish. Absolute picturesque outlook and I could actually just roll out the swag on the beach and stay here for a few days. We started off with a little bit of a dip in the cold water, walked down the beach and tried to feed some of the stingrays there. How picturesque is this spot that we've got here? Oh, it's beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. You've really got to get off the Princess Highway though because as you're skirting down here, you could very easily miss all these little inlets as you come in. They're hidden little gems, aren't they? Very pretty part of the world. With the sun beating down harshly on the convoy, we were heading to a nearby river for a spot of fishing and a nice cool swim. It was going to be a bit of a trek to get there. Fortunately, we had some local knowledge guiding our way. So I've had a quick chat this morning with Crystal, the manager here at Ingenia Holidays, Lake Conjola. She's given me a few ideas on what we can do in the area. So big thank you. Thanks, Crystal. did some great tracks today, just nice, easy, running down into a lot of dry creek beds. But a lot of greenery around, a lot of firm work. We've seen a couple of snakes today, we've seen a lot of frogs getting around. It's amazing, really, the, the amount of wildlife that is just on show here. We've got birds, we've got kangaroos in people's front yards. Driving into camp tonight, I just saw kangaroos sitting inside in someone's front yard like it was normal. Everything so far has been fairly relaxed. Uh, it's very dry though, just trying to avoid those fires. So at the moment we're just poking around, looking at a few different water courses and we've seen a few really, really nice beaches and stuff so far. What I'm used to up in, you know, the Brindabellas and Kosciuszko is a little bit more hilly and rocky, but this is still a good change nonetheless. We just carried on along a power line road and found this little stretch of an inlet coming out. The ocean's actually only just a little bit down there. Obviously, not even the Alveco is going to cross this one, so we're going to head back along the fire trail track here and make our way around, and we'll probably be in camp in no more than sort of half an hour or so. Been a great day. The weather's been very kind. The wind's died off a little bit. There is still a little bit of smoke in the air, but we're all still very, very safe and tracking away from it. We've been extremely hampered by the fires that are going on down south of us, so we're staying up north of them. Although it's absolutely beautiful down here, we have had to change our plans a little bit over the last few days just because of the fires that are so close. We've been keeping a pretty keen eye on those simply because the wind changes and they could be right on top of us. Our final destination for the day was the Walter Hood Monument a perfect place to take in some local history. What we were met with though was an uncanny light thrown from a disconcerting sky. Good morning and now look at blackness. As you can probably see, the sky has been blue and amazing and then you look out and all of a sudden it looks like Armageddon. Huge amount of wind that's blown 80, 90 kilometres an hour has been pushing these fires into areas that they weren't expecting them to go. The fires for us have really been a little bit of an inconvenience. It's meant we've had to reschedule our trip, change some of our plans. It's much more than an inconvenience to the people who live here. Have a look how black, how intense it is over my shoulder. And with so many fires and so many people's lives affected, we highly recommend give in any way that you can because it could just make that little difference that people need at the moment. Princess Highway has been closed. Unfortunately, they've lost some homes down there. There's absolutely thousands and thousands of hectares been burnt out. Amazing job to the firefighters down there that are trying to keep that under control, protecting people's lives and property. Original plan was to go down south and spend some time inland, but unfortunately we can't do that as most of the camp spots we were supposed to be heading to are actually on fire at the moment. So yeah, we're heading back north and see what we can find up there. We had time for one more stop to Barara Beach. Much like Lake Conjola, there was barely anyone on the streets. With the sunlight filtered harshly through the smoke, it sure wasn't hard to see why. I'd have to say it was one of the most frightening things. Over this ocean, the sky was black and the sky was billowing with smoke. Just shocking, shocking.
Join us next week as we stay ahead of the fires and finally hit the incredible Monkey Gum Fire Trail. A relentless ascent with rocks, ruts, washouts and more. We'll show you every scrape, bounce, bust and wheel lift on our way to the top. Don't miss it.